Hello and welcome everybody. Today we're going to be uh, painting the train or one of the pieces of train from the new uh, Kill Team set. So what I've done is I primed it in a silver, a bright silver uh, color all over. Um, uh, I want it to be bright because we're going to go over it with a couple of different filters. The second step, the next thing we want to do is paint all the metal parts um, and, and we want to create some chaos, some uh, just different colors and different things to draw the eye. So I end up using, I think, three different uh, colors. The first one I used was Pro Acryl uh, Copper. <clears throat> it's a, a bright, and I have a pretty bright lighting in my studio. So uh, it looks almost gold, but that's a copper. The next one was also from Pro Acryl. It's a dark silver, that's just what it's called. So, um, and I just kind of random, somewhat randomly pick different things, but I want most of the structure to be uh, the silver. Um, so you'll see a lot more of that. Just going different pieces. I water this down or thin it out the paints a bit so that it'll flow uh, well. Just picking out different pieces. You can go back and forth on, you know, just because you don't get it all in one, you know, at one time, get all the gold or copper, or whatever. Uh, it's not a problem. Just go back and, and hit them all. Try to get, you know, like both the grates. I went with the same color. The different raised uh, textured uh, metal or armor pieces. I uh, go with the darker color. I would go with, this is the, uh, the copper again for all the, uh, those little orky pointy parts and pieces there. Um, I'll also use, eventually you'll see that I use the bronze color, which is more of a brown. I think this is the area, yes, that I start uh, using uh, a bronze. I stayed away from gold, um, like pure gold. It just didn't seem like a orc junky, you know, kind of uh, scrap metal that they would use. And also uh, our next... Uh, steps after we get these base colors metals down is we're going to go over it uh, with a couple of different washes or different filters uh, to really dull it down and create the illusion of rust gold doesn't rust um, so it kind of would be odd in that sense so just going you to see you know the different pieces uh, that I use are different, you know, different colors on different pieces. And then I take some Pro Acryl uh, Burnt Red. So it's, it's that, you know, for Citadel, it could be like a corn red. And there's some like pieces of metal that are used to like, like straps or uh, pieces to connect. So I kind of wanted to change up or break up from the metallic look. So you know what, it's orc, so let's get some red in there. So just going over the different pieces. So now what I use for a wash, I don't just use a pre-made wash because we use so much of it. So I just make something. So what this is, is mahogany and orange because it's gonna be rust. We want an orangish brown and a lot of water. Uh, the paint is about a 50-50 mix and you can see it's coming up. Now, if you just want to buy a paint, you can use like Mornfang Brown from Citadel. That's an orange brown. So uh, uh, this is going to give the, uh, the look or the illusion of rust and or um, uh, dust, okay? So you can kind of see how thin or, you know, the, the consistency of it. So I just mix it up in these little shot glasses so this is you kind of see the different pieces uh, different colors and stuff you know uh, there's no set way but you know all the upright posts I did with the dark silver so now we're just going over it you know I'm not just doing this so heavy I do want the metallics obviously to come through 
Um, so this is a filter. I'm not using it like a traditional wash would be used, like if you're going to do a wash over a, a cape or flesh or something. Um, I just want it... I want it to be somewhat thin. We are going to go back right after this step or the next step is going to be we're going to do the same thing with a black wash to create shadows um, in some of the darker areas. So this is just giving uh, the look of uh, rust and dirt, grime, um, which is going to be our final thing is uh, to grime up the whole uh, thing. So. You just go over the whole piece, uh, inside out, all that. So this is just uh, coal black. You can use any black and a lot of water. Um, you know, we're just making a, an, a, a very thin acrylic wash, you could say. And a little bit more water for good measure. And you may want to concentrate, or what I wanted, what I was thinking is like around the edges where, because these plates, these metal plates are raised, so where the two meet, you know, there would be a shadow there. So you want to uh, in there, or where the upright or the the taller portion of the wall is to the top platform, you know, kind of in there. So just all over. So now we're going to do our first dry brushing. I just use silver. This is a bright color. I use a two inch brush, just cheap old brush. You know, it's it's not quite an over brush. It's a very heavy dry brush. Now what I also like to do is whenever I'm testing out how much paint's on there, find an area, you know, that's not as prominent. So something underneath and that way you can kind of see, okay, how much paint is going to come off. Now I do, again, I have pretty bright lights in my studio. My old eyes need that. So it, it's not always easy, but you can see like on this, see on the left side, that brass uh, thing, uh, piece of metal and we brushed over it and see where it's just kind of changing uh, the tones on there, obviously bringing out the raised areas and just kind of, you know, all those rivets and then definitely all the texture. There's so much texture here on the top platform all those little spiky parts up there so you can kind of see different areas you know this is just to you know we put that filter on to dull it down but we don't want it to be so uniform uh, that it, our eyes would just glance over it and that's why we, we come back and we dry brush and we create some highlight uh, and you know definition I mean that's what contrast does we got the dull from the filters and then we're going to bring out uh, some of those edges uh, before we get on to um, some of the other uh, base colors the uh, yellows and reds that we will be doing on this piece so just go over um, I think on on this whole dry brush I I only put paint on the brush one time and you know it just it goes a long ways again this is a large brush this is a two inch brush and uh, um, it's just controlling it so you take you know take your time to uh, apply it and, and build up the layers all right I think I point out see like those rivets how bright you know they, they really stand out from that dark metal if we would have just had the primer color um, and then the, the wash and the dry brush it wouldn't uh, pop it near as much. All the areas that I wanted yellow I put a base coat of pale yellow you could use a white it's just you know most yellows uh, that you use the coverage just uh, you would just it's so aggravating trying to cover up a darker color and even though it's a, this metallic it just wouldn't work. So I just go over the areas with pale yellow. And then in our next step, we'll go over with the uh, the golden yellow right here. And it's, you know, I end up putting, you know, just two coats on, you know, one, one and a half, whatever, just in the areas. Um, and, you know, take a little bit of time here. And because this is, 
you know, I don't want to just say a central part of the terrain or feature of it, but it is, you know, a stark contrast from all the metallics and the dinginess to this just, you know, uh, solid color. And then on the little orc icons um, around the piece, just go in with your red. And as you can see here around the mouth, don't worry about being all nice and neat there because we're just going to cover up the raised portion with a, uh, a, a white. So just kind of get a brush and jab it in there. And it's orc, so it doesn't have to be, you know, 100% neat. And, you know, you can leave some edges off to uh, uh, show wear and tear. So then I go back, I go in here with titanium, bold titanium white. Just, uh, and it's, it's going to take a couple of uh, passes, a couple of layers to get this uh, so that it doesn't look splotchy. Um, like there's a difference between paint looking splotchy or too thin on something and um, having it look like it's worn down. Now I go over all the yellow parts with uh, uh, Casadoria yellow from Citadel. It's their shade. It's the yellow shade color. Um, I'll also show you, I think after I do all this, you could use the contrast um, Yeltharin yellow, I believe, and like contrast medium at a 50-50 mix. I did that on another piece just to see what it was. Just if you put the contrast on straight or, you know, without uh, cutting it with any medium, it's the pigment's really dark. It doesn't filter near as much as it does cover. Yeah. So uh, I, yeah, I yanned in yellow in contrast. So that little gas can, you know, was kind of, so if that's what you have, use that. Now I just want to do some quick highlights on the red parts, uh, like the orcs and the, uh, the metal strap pieces, connector pieces. So I just, I'd take my brightest red, which was a uh, uh, pyro red, bold pyro red. And, you know, it's not like a uniform, neat highlight. It's just, you know, it's, it's, not, it's not quite random and it's not quite uniform. It's somewhere in between. You know, on these pieces, I just kind of, you know, it's kind of hit the middle part. I didn't want to cover up the edges where the uh, silver dry brush went on. So I just kind of just poke a little bit of color, highlight color in there, you know. And uh, with these train pieces, you know, it's, it's just about having it painted and then you can do like one central cool thing. And what we're going to do here on the, these two panels, I'm just covering this again with white because we're going to do a checkerboard, kind of that orc checkerboard, black and white look so this is just a, a base coat cover that up and then on the lights we're going to um, put some more of that yellow shade color to give it the effect of a light uh, that's turned on there so there's uh, lights i think this one just had two there's this round light and then there's like a a tube light here on the inside of it so it's just those little things you know you spend a couple of minutes and it just kind of really goes a long way so while I was waiting on that to dry again get any color black and go over the cable link you know if you want it black uh, you know you can do whatever whatever color but there's all sorts of cabling so then instead of just totally freehanding I just got my pencil and I drew out here a pretty simple grid just to give me an idea of you know some lines to stay between and figure out which one start at one paint it black and then every other one that's how checkerboard patterns work and if you're not familiar with that you can google it so if you're watching this video there is a piece of this terrain that i left off uh, on accident and then I found it later it's very small if you find that piece uh, send me a message let me uh, just know that you uh, uh, don't put it in the comments because that's then it's just not as fun send me a message on Facebook or email 
uh, smoothland studio at gmail.com and uh, let, let me see who my thorough listeners and uh, what piece is missing from this terrain but like if you got something else to do don't spend a lot of time hunting for it it's there's no prize it's a it's a no prize award that you get but these these are great pieces of terrain uh, i've painted previous kill team terrain and they're great but you know orc stuff is just fun to paint so there we go we got the checkerboard down there and just grab some of that yellow shade um, whichever way you want to do it or whatever brand and uh, just cover that in you know and you just kind of eyeball it and it's like okay I want more there and then as you're going to see I'm going to put some around it kind of just you know where the light would uh, shine you know in the uh, immediate vicinity of the light and you also don't have to be totally uh, neat and perfect in that fluorescent or that light tube light here okay there's also on this was on a different piece of terrain there's like these light bulbs here and I wanted to do it a different color so I just I, again I painted them uh, a base coat of white and then I went over it with I believe that's uh, like you can either use Gilliman blue which is a citadel uh, shade or glaze or um, Talazar blue Talazar blue being a contrast paint it's real bright so you'll you want to thin that down with some water uh, I did want it to be fairly light and then here I go back over it just like the bottoms of the light don't paint the broken one because that would be silly it would not be lit up and just kind of um, just so that it's not a solid color so now I'm going to highlight the yellow part. Um, you know, there's two yellow pieces and I spent five minutes, you know, highlighting it because it's pretty simple and I just think it's nice. It stands out. So this is the Pro Acryl Pale Yellow or you can just add a little white to whatever yellow you used. And uh, you can go over the, the uh, edges of these little uh, dings and dents and uh, on the flat areas you can just kind of do a little like here just like a little crosshatch or a line where light would gather and create a highlight and so there's the this little tank area something else you can do you know and you can always go back and add to this you know you can paint in those gauges um, different colors for the different hoses and such here I'm just doing a pretty quick and simple edge ish highlight I'm just going over, I mean, this is, you know, literally it just takes a couple of minutes to, to do this. And, you know, it's just a nice little uh, thing to, to make it stand out. Now for the final touches, I use Typhus Corrosion, I believe is what it's called from Games Workshop. It's a technical paint. And it's just a grime. So we're just kind of creating some grime. So I use one brush to kind of just dab it on the bottom. And then I just take another brush and kind of feather it around a little bit. Um, it just makes it uh, a little um, lighter at the top and just kind of in the corners where uh, oil or the dirt would have kicked up from the ground. Uh, any uh, little areas that just kind of kind of seem right I, I do I think on the other side I do a an area that's a little higher up by the uh, by that canister tank oh here we go here's the area that I'm like oh just to break it up create you know create a distraction for your eye just the other edge and again this this process just takes a few minutes just you know I bought this I seriously bought this typhus corrosion it'll be six years ago that's right it's almost six years one of the first projects that I painted I needed it and it's lasted and because you know you don't use very much of it yeah just kind of grime up around different areas 
you know you can always you know less is definitely more in this and you just kind of add up whatever areas that uh, you know I figure oh this area you know there's some moving parts and the grease would kind of you know uh, accumulate around there or need you know it'd be an area that needs to have some oil so just you know and the great thing about terrain you know you can you could do you know you base coat it in silver and then you block in the different metallics you know you do that one day and then you know or one week here i kind of have like a dripping effect and then you can go back and apply the wash so you know you can play you, you know use this terrain and you know just kind of add to it or you know what you're going to find there's so many neat pieces on this train you're going to be like oh that's a plasma something or another and you know you should add it in there so all right hey i hope you enjoyed this video and i hope it helps you uh, to just uh, get your train painted and enjoy your models uh, if you would like and subscribe and i thank you all very much and uh, enjoy your painting